Right, we're heading off. It's just about 6.30 on Sunday morning. Had a very restful night, probably the most restful of the three nights here in Port Lincoln. Packed up the car, did up the charger, back up to 90% overnight on the trickle. Pulse stars already. Said goodbye to Simon and Pete. Gonna head back. Um, charge at Whaler again probably or maybe Port Augusta to give that one out. Put my photo up there just for just for the heck of it. And Port Wakefield and then Paralawi again, I think. Um, and then back to the ferry at Cape Jervis. So looking forward to another day of driving in the Polestar, another 815 kilometers. See how the efficiency ranks up and we'll record along the way. So see you soon. take a photo when we get to 10,000. We're here south of Wyala, middle of nowhere. We just have to stop somewhere here when we get there. 10,000! Woohoo! 10,000 kilometers! We made it to 10,000 kilometers! Twiggy! Perfect stop! Perfect place to stop! We got 10,000 kilometers! Celebration Twiggy! Celebrate Twiggy! We got 10,000 kilometers at Pine Hill! Woohoo! 10,000 kilometers! Yay! In the pop star! 10,000 kilometers! Woohoo! Alright, we're charging here. Back at the RAA in Wyala. I was tempted to go to the vet because uh, just to give them some support and that but I looked it up and it said charging with oh sorry payment with Evan SA or something like that I didn't have that so just for safety sake I'd come here and um, RAA is always pretty reliable tap the RFID card it worked first time this time so yeah very good we're ramping up 115 116 118 119 120 121 I think we got 127 last time so uh, we were at 29% or 28% I can't really remember 122 123 I think that's what we're gonna get we're gonna go from 30 to 90 we'll let the twig out and do it have her do a wee maybe do our wee ourselves at Hungry Jacks not gonna get Hungry Jacks this time <laughs> All right, we just clocked over 10,000 too. Sorry, I'll focus on myself. We just clocked over 10,000 too, which was good. 10,000 as well. So we just went over 10,000 Ks in the pop star. Look at that, ready doing 123 at 31, 31. Very good. All right, check back in when we're fully charged. Oh, the other thing is I might put the, um, Put the GoPro on the window for something different and do some recording there. Try that. What do you reckon? Try that, Twee? Yeah. All right. Everything's good. Had a wee. 103 at 62, so we're still cranking. I'll just drag down to 199. Down to 99 at 62. Interesting, interesting indeed. Charging, I don't know if you can see that. I've got the GoPro mounted on the on the um, window. We're at 83%. Still getting 37 kilowatts. It's gonna say it's being done by 10.09 a.m. Um, might go and just get a photo at the vets one just to show them support and say that we stopped there for the ride up. And um, I just like to get a photo of me with the GoPro. Switch it around. Twig, can you see you? Can we see you there? Uppies? Twig, where are you? Twig. 
Look, you're over there. There she is. Here, three. Over there. Over here. Three. Come here. Here we go. Go. That was a good photo. All right, I think we did the photo and we'll now try it when we're driving. Oh, put my hand in the way. But we'll leave it up there and we'll try when we're driving. All right. Hey, Lou. Hello there. Um, we charged to 90%. And now we're going to go check out the veterinary clinic. This is a little experiment to see how the how the um, GoPro works when I'm driving so we'll have a look afterwards Google's telling us which way to go now I could have gone to the veterinary clinic and charged there but I needed an app um, how do I oh, it's telling me to go this way head southwest I'm heading southwest Google so I'm not sure what you can see on the on the GoPro in 150 meters, turn left. I'm saying the doors open. I'm gonna have to stop and close the door because you're on there, turn Google. I mean, GoPro. Hang on. GOP stands for Grand Old Party. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? We're gonna try and close the door. Try and get to the veterinary clinic. Got 90% charge. I think you've collapsed a bit there, Mr. GoPro. It's going to be a work in progress. In 800 meters at the roundabout, take the fourth exit and stay on McDowell Stewart Avenue. Where is the vet clinic? Oh, yeah, there it is there. But I think I have to go around the roundabout. Because I can't do a U-turn. That would be... Oh, you've completely collapsed now. Collapsed GoPro. Tilted you back up. Can you see anything out the window, GoPro people? YouTube watchers, can you see anything around the roundabout? Exit the roundabout onto McDowell Stewart Avenue. roundabout. Now we're going to go to the vets. In 400 metres, turn left. Coming up to the vets now. Where is the vets? Turn left, then your destination will be on the right. Got some dogs. Your destination is on the right. All right, how does that look? Does that look okay? <laughs> All right, so we stopped in here at the vet veterinary clinic just to see the charges. And um, you need an Evanesse app to make them work. But just wanted to give them some support and write them up in my little article. Uh, so they're 70 kilowatts and you need the Evanesse app to make them work. But it's great that the vet clinic had them on made them work, we made bring the charges here before the RAA, so that's pretty good. And we checked them out, the Weiler Veterinary Clinic, and now we're going to head back to KI via Port Augusta, that way, yeah. Twiggy's in the back, she's not coming to the vet for a visit. You escaped the vet and you're not coming to the vet for a visit, Twiggy? <laughs> you can sense the other dogs though, can't you? All right, good girl, we'll put you away. All right, I'm not 
sure what you can see there. She's a bit wobbly, wobbly, wobbly camera. But we're recording and we're driving through Wyala. We're just exiting Wyala. Oh, it's 100k in our speed limit, so we'll speed up. So we charged successfully at RAA. Um, wow, look at that. We'll get Garmin to do the dash cam. Save video. Look at those flags. Wow, that looks really cool. I'm hoping you're seeing that GoPro. Can you see that outside the window? Not sure if you can. It's a work in progress, this thing. Hopefully you get to see me driving a little bit. Driving down out of Wyala, past the big steelworks. Somewhere there's the big boat here. I always remember the big boat fondly. The SS Wyala, I think it is. If you see it, I'll stop. So, yeah, good job. Recording me driving, that's good, legally. 110. Have we gone past the boat? I'm not sure if we've gone past the boat. I'm not sure if you can see out the window at all. Port Augusta, 71 kilometres. See all those wind turbines on the hill? Amazing all the wind turbines here in this country. I was truly amazed by how many wind turbines there were. So we've got the dash cam mounted on the window now. Everything's good. Get a bit of road footage there. We'll get some more along the way. Good job, GoPro. All right, now we're going over the Port Augusta Bridge. Over the bridge. There's the very top of the Spencer Gulf can't go any further from here all the way up the gulf looks pretty windy today it's interesting the water's still quite blue up here I would have thought it was more muddy and murky but looks pretty blue and there's the downs we're not going to stop in to Port Augusta we're just going to keep going to Wakefield so we've got 210 kilometers to go to the Wakefield RAA. We'll get there with 27%. According to Google's at 1.34 and it's 11.14 now, so that's two hours and 20 minutes of driving. We've made it over the Spencer Gulf. We didn't catch the ferry. And we'll just keep going through Port Augusta. There's the sun drop out there. Making solar power by shining. I can see the shiny thing on there. I can actually see it shining. I think it must be shining through the dust and just the atmosphere. There's all the turbines. See all the wind turbines spinning? Off they spin, 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 spin. Spinning away. Love to see the wind turbines. Clean energy. Blowing away. Blow, blow, blow. Look at them twisting and turning, and we just went past the big solar farm, too. The sun drop solar farm. Okay, Garmin. Save video. Save video. We stopped here. I think it's called Harry's or Moe's. Harry's homemade. 
got a big giant salami. Trap grain calf. We're putting it into the uh, into the fridge. It's where you can smell it. <laughs> the big salami. Get a pillow and cover it up nice and well. So yeah, we're here just outside of Port Perry, I think. Harry's homemade. Classic place. Lots of salami. Have a look. All the salamis there. Catch it for you, salamis there. All the pickles and the homemade stuff. Homemade stuff. Everything's pickled, pickled onions, pickled squid. Big salami, one of those big salamis we got. Look at all the fruit and veg. Water there. Old style water. Car. Well, close the car. Back on the highway, off we go. Make sure we got everything. Got the twig. Whoa. Put the water in. Google's trying to tell me how to get back on the road. Hemp seed oil and capsules. There you go. Inflammation killer. What do you reckon, Twig? We've got big salami. You get some big salami when we get home. Good girl. Hey, we're here in Snowtown and morbid, I know, but I've always wanted to check out this building where they had the bodies in the barrel. So I thought I'd just stop and check it out with the Polestar and it's actually open as collectibles, bric-a-brac and souvenirs. Yeah, something different on the tourism trail. Actually looks like quite a nice little town, Snowtown. Quiet little town. Skull and cross crossbones, which is appropriate. Look at the patina on this building. Amazing. Looks amazing. They're looking under the peach trees. I think it was the old bank building. And they were just renting it. Tell you they've got all the history up here. And you can read read about what happened. Just sad for the people that actually got caught up in it, you know, 1999. That was the year I moved back to Australia from America, so... Yeah, 24 years ago it all happened. Rest in peace all the people that were affected by it. And, um, not good, not a good situation, so... Sad history. So that's the actual vault door there. Oh, that one there. Oh, okay. This this is the bank vault in here. And actually went down lower level, or was it just back in there? No, just one. Yeah, just one room in memory of those taken by greed, e evil, greed, and ignorance. Another cool silo, except this one's a water tower. That's cool, isn't it? I'm trying to take photos and videos at the same time. There we go. Better get going. Need to charge. Getting hot. Twiggy needs a drink. There's the Loch Ness monster out there at Loch Eel. Probably can't see him because he's all the way out there. Took a quick photo. 
lots of people stopping but got to go and get charged up Loch Ness Monster all right we're charging at Port Wakefield and got a maximum of 128 kilowatts at 48 percent I think we got here with, I don't even remember now, 25 I think, 129, it's weird how it's going up, yeah and we stopped at the um, old Snowtown bank side of bodies in the barrel, if you don't know what that is, what that is, look it up, pretty morbid tourism, um, I should have looked um, how many people were actually kept in 129 how many people were kept in the in the barrels it's actually a pretty sad story about people that were kind of kidnapped and murdered in the um poor in town of adelaide and then they were kept in barrels in acid in the in the basement of the or in the back bank vault of this bank building so i've always wanted to stop there and check it out so i did that and i got a sticker to put on the charging board so we here at Port Wakefield, back where we were when we left. We're going to just re revisiting all our original sites where we stopped. And Twiggy's got some water. You want to drink some water, Twig? It's good for you. You need some water. Yes. It's a hot day. It's actually not too hot, which is nice. It's only 28 degrees or something. There's the big salami. I can smell that. Oh, it smells so good. That smell of that salami. Oh, my God's goodness. We've got a couple of peaches, so we might have a peach. Some Something healthy, at least. Have a nice peach. Close that up with the fridge. We're getting some air out there in the fridge. So, yeah, we're getting hundred back down to 124.52. So it should only take, um, I don't know, half an hour, 35 minutes to go from 25 to 90, maybe a bit more. It cost about $30 or something like that. Ooh, lots of marks on the car, blood spots too, which is weird, I haven't really seen that before. Magnificent vehicle, had a chat to the people in the, in the Snowtown Bank building about electric cars. They repeated all the myths that you hear, but I try to set them straight. And in the end, the guy said he wanted a QT6, so GT line. So he obviously knows his stuff. It's interesting how people just automatically say bad things when they actually know more than they let on. So anyway, we'll have our peach charge up to 90 and get going. Okay, we've mounted the camera back on the side window. We're just at 89, getting to 21. I don't know what it is. Some something I just about. Um, wanting to get that last one percent it's um three o'clock on the dot so we've got four hours to get to the ferry and we'll go to the google maps maps hey google navigate me to cape jervis navigating to cape jarvis so two hours and 35 minutes so ooh, we're getting kind of close there we'll get there with 38 percent so we're probably gonna i'll top up at paralawi and get um a little bit there so we'll say cancel google cancel navigation hey google cancel navigation stopping navigation hey google navigate me to the ev charger at paralawi Driving out of uh, Port Wakefield, I'm trying to find directions here, telling me to go around and round, so you'll get to see a bit of driving, hello there, a bit of driving on the Google thing there, so it looks okay on the little screen on the front, keep it to below 50 k's an hour. Asking me to do a, a U-turn round the roundabout. Take the next left onto National Highway A1, then 
Ooh, lots of traffic. I think it's going to be quite busy. I think it's going to be quite busy. And it's wanting me to go... What is it wanting me to do here? Is it wanting me to go round and round? Continue straight to stay on National Highway A1. Why is it making me go all the way down here? In 500 metres, make a U-turn. I could have done a U-turn back there. Is it making me do a U-turn here? Uh, no. Here? Balaclava. Oh, there it's asking me to do a U-turn. There we go. Silly Google. Make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. 28 degrees, we got 90% charge to we've got full, 72 kilometers to Paralawi to do a top up at the EV so that I have plenty when I get home, or not plenty, but so I'm not running out when I get home. Big trucks here, and you get to see some driving, big trucks there. It feels hotter than 27, I've got the air conditioner cranking. So now we're back into really civilization. This is almost like a freeway, um, dual carriageway. Look at this massive road train. I don't know if you can see that on the um, Kalari. I'm not sure what is it. Is it cement or something? Maybe it's cement or. I don't really want to get close to it going around the roundabout. So we'll keep going through Port Wakefield next to a massive road train. How many? It's got three tra like three trailers? Yeah, one, two, three. Um, I don't want to get next to it if it's going to be doing turny turnies. Already breaking the speed limit. 56. 56. No, oh, I guess we can go. It's still only 50. Uh, look how bloody long that. Look how long that. <laughs> look how. Oh, we go. Here we go. 110. Kalari. Here we go. Massive road train. I wonder how many horsepower that truck is. 160 star, massive, 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 massive. Scoot over into this lane and cruise. I might All right, we're just doing a very quick chop up here to 85 at the EV station. Let's see how, much, how long I'm mainly worried about getting to Cape Jarvis in time. So, hey Google. Navigate me to Cape Jarvis. Navigating to Cape Jarvis. So we get there at 5.58 p.m. That gives us half an hour leeway. So I think we'll stop the charge now at 85%. Uh, car, charge, drop it back down to 80. It says done. Go out the side. Hit the unclick button. Flash, flash, flash. Green, put it back. percent 12 kilowatts we took. That means we'll get there safely. Put this back here. All right, onwards we go. Let's go to the ferry.
Down the hill we go. Almost home to Kangaroo Island. Another epic, epic road trip. Very good. Down the hill. Almost down the hill. Okay, we made it to the ferry right at 6 o'clock, so with a whole half an hour or 45 minutes to spare. We came just as the other ferry was leaving. This is the ferry we're going on, the Spocky, the cargo one. And we're all ready to go. We got here with 63%. Check out the trip meter. So we've done 766 kilometers today. Average of 17.5 kilowatt hours per hundy because we were a lot of fast roads. So average of 89 k's an hour and uh, 8.52 hours driving. And yeah, we went over the 10,000 kilometers. So that was momentous. And now we go on the ferry. Hey Google, navigate me home. Navigating to home. There we go. Shows the roadworks on the way. Always roadworks. Uh, one hour and 56 minutes, including the ferry, and we'll get home at 49%, which is perfect like to keep the car in about 50 but I am going to be taking it out on Wednesday for a drive around the island so I probably didn't need to do that last charge but hey we did it we don't have to worry about having running out or charging tonight or whatever well, we can charge over the next couple of days and then be ready to go for some work driving before we go to Sydney in a couple of weeks back on the ferry so yeah Exciting times, lots of road tripping ahead. Twiggy gets to stay home next time. Yeah, Twiggy, that's a bit sad, isn't it? I'm not sure if I'll film on the ferry because I've still got footage left over from the last trip when it was so lumpy and bumpy. So hopefully it's a bit smoother this time, although it is very windy and choppy, but I don't think the swell is that bad, hopefully. I think we're almost ready to go on board. So we'll see ya, maybe when we get to the other side, maybe, maybe on the upper deck. wanted to show you the yellow line so the EVs have to be in front of the yellow line now so that's something new right at the front they can ditch them into the ocean if they need to that's all the other cars there and I'll tell you a bit more about what he told me when I get upstairs all right so there's the cars back to the yellow line put your cars in front of the yellow line Cool, 
made it back it's uh, two days later or something like that I just wanted to record the um, the total trip uh, oh, cars beeping um, 18 1847 kilometers 16.9 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers efficiency 24 hours and 12 minutes exactly behind the wheel and an average of 79 kilometers an hour um, I already the trip autos disappeared from that last trip, which was probably another 80 uh, 800 kilometers so um, The biggest thing was being parked at the back with the ceilings new rules You have to EVs have to park at the back. So there's a big explanation of that about that or oh, cars beeping too close to stuff um, Yeah, so um, Mixed feelings or not mixed feelings kind of disappointed and feeling a bit uh, discriminated against as an EV owner they are saying that all EVs need to be checked um, for temperature um, damage and then they need to be parked at the very front and they can't go on um, uh, ferries with hazardous materials like fuel or other hazardous materials which rules out some sailings so of all that the worst thing for me is that we <laughs> parked at the back it was pretty rough crossing or windy crossing and I just got covered in sea spray you're really the most exposed at the back there so not happy about that and then also not um, being allowed on all the ships all the sailings um, I think it's discriminatory and also since ice vehicles are more prevalent to fire why aren't they inspecting all ice vehicles so uh yeah i'm going to be writing an article about that that's just my reflections on coming back um the other night when i didn't i stopped recording again uh i got in yeah so the ferry was uh 7 30 got in just after 8 um 8 15 then i spent an hour washing the car in the dark because it was covered in salt um and also dust from the roadworks um, I joked that it was good to go on last because then you get pole position but the problem with that coming off the ferry back onto Kangaroo Island at sunset was um, I slowed down for the wildlife but no one else did and they hooned past me which is just disgusting I think so um, yeah so I'll be writing all of this up in a, in a story um, and those are my feelings about the end of the trip other than that the trip was fantastic uh, really had a great time. The charging was effortless. Um, saved a heap of money. Great to see old friends again. 
and I can't wait for the next road trip near the kind of car because she's beeping. Um, head off to the Sydney Sydney Expo, Sydney Show, everything electric show in Sydney uh, in exactly two weeks. So today's Wednesday, heading off on an assignment to go to the Kelly Hill Caves and um, do another story about a garden thing. So anyway, back on duty, doing stuff in the Polestar, had a great trip. Those are just my reflections at the end of it all. So thanks very much for watching everything and I better get going to my jobs. See you later.